this morning, dear Lord, because we have the freedom to come worship you openly, dear Lord. We can let the, the world hear our hearts, hear our voices, and praise for you, dear Lord, without fear. We're truly blessed today. Dear Lord, receive all the honor and the glory, dear Lord. It's not about us, it's about what you've done for us, dear Lord. And we can't thank you enough. Be with us now. Receive all the praise and worship, dear Lord, that we can give in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's Amen. Pray for all. Uh, if you want to turn in your Bibles to Philippians, uh, ch chapter 2 is what we're going to be looking at today. Um, if you remember Pastor Randy's message last week, he talked about us putting ingredients in to God's perfect plan, and then when we add the ingredients, we kind of mess it up. And this is just how God works. I said this last week, that I knew what I was uh, going to preach on today. God had put this message on my heart several weeks ago. And we're going to look at humility through Christ. And if you think about what Pastor talked about last week, about um, not putting our own ingredients and trusting in God's plan, that kind of takes humility to say, you know what, um, God, you know more than me. God, your plan's better than mine, so I need to step out of this and trust you. That's a sign of humility. The other thing that's amazing, um, I'm sure a lot of you know, uh, we pray every week before we start the service. A group of us gather out there and just pray for the service. And this morning, Pastor Randy had Sister Deb pray. And in her prayer this morning, she prayed that we would come here not only to hear a message and not only to be who God wants us to be while we're here, but that we would be that person all week. And it just struck me that God, our hearts are in unity. I mean, that she prayed that knowing what I was going to talk, talk about today was that we would humble ourselves and be the people that God wants us to be. So if you'll uh, turn to Philippians chapter 2. Get my cheaters out here. Now, this is Paul's letter to the church in uh, Philippi. Uh, when Paul wrote this letter, he was in prison, but he wasn't in prison. He was actually on house arrest. And if you read this book, and I would urge you to read Philippians, it's only four chapters, and it is an absolute, you can see Paul's love and his humility for God's people in these four chapters. It's almost like a love story. Here he is in prison, house, house arrest, but still in prison, writing this letter to the church in Philippi because he got a report of how strong their faith was. And in, in, before uh, in chapter 2 and in, in chapter 1, he talks about the fact that even though he was on house arrest, the gospel was getting preached because he had the opportunity to kind of move around. He wasn't in a cell. Um, so people that came into his life, even though he was in house arrest, 
he was still glorifying God and sharing the gospel. So the gospel was being spread even through him going through this imprisonment. Philippians chapter 2, starting in verse 1, says, If you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from his love, if any fellowship with the Spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and purpose. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, but in humility consider others better than yourselves. Each of you should look not only to your own interests, but also to the interests of others. Your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus, who being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on the cross. Therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Let's pray. Father God, as we gather here today, united, Father, through Christ, and we get into your word, Lord, I just pray that you are glorified through our worship, through this message, through our fellowship, Lord. May all that happens here be done to glorify you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. We see in this part of the story that um, we're being urged to humble ourselves as Christ humbled himself. And if you, if you go back, there's a couple things. If you want to turn back in chapter 1, just pre, lead, these are things that I thought were pretty neat leading up to uh, what, we're be, what Paul's asking the church to be, united in one spirit. But you can see his love for the church. If you look in chapter 1 in verse 3, it says... I thank my God every time I remember you. In all my prayers for all of you, I always pray with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. Do you see Paul's love for, the, for these people? I, I pray for you and I rejoice because we're united I have joy because of the partnership that we have through Christ until now. There is the first thing of humility that we see is that our unity is because of who? And not because of who? Ourselves. So there is the first thing we see in humility that what God has brought together here as Iron Faith Fellowship has nothing to do with us, has nothing to do with our own personalities. It has to do with the fact that we are united in Christ and he wants us to be like-minded. Again, his love for his people in verse 8 of chapter 1. He says, God can testify how long for all of you, how, how I long for all of you with the affection of Jesus Christ. Now I took that as how many times do, uh, you know, we see stuff put on a prayer chain or we get a text, hey, this person's struggling, and we answer back, praying. Or, you know, I'll pray for her. But how many times do we do that? Do we sincerely, at that moment, take time to get on our knees and pray? Yeah. And what Paul says here is God can testify how much I pray for you. So he's not ashamed of the fact that people might think, hey, I'm not praying for you. He said, God can testify. That means he prays to God for these people. And he's so true and so strong in that, that he's willing to, put, to have you ask God, hey, is Paul really praying for me? That's his love for his people. And then again, we see it in 
uh, still in chapter 1, verse 19. It says, For I know that through your prayers and through help given by the Spirit of Jesus Christ, what has happened to me will turn out for my deliverance. Meaning his arrest is still going to turn out for him to be delivered. I eagerly expect and hope that I will in no way be ashamed of the gospel, but will have sufficient courage so that now, as always, Christ will be exalted in my body, whether by life or by death. Then look at verse 21. For to me, to live is Christ and to die is gain. That's how much he wants to honor God with his life. One of the last things that, um, and this changed me, one of the last things that I got to sit down and talk with my brother about in that last week when we knew that he was going to go be with the Lord. You know, when he fought this cancer, he ate, he ate, he ate, uh, he ate this diet, and it was quinoa and kale and all this stuff that you wouldn't go to the store and say, oh, yeah, give me some of that. And he stuck to this diet because he felt it was helping him fight the cancer. And when I told him that he only had a few days to live, I said to him, I said, Steve, you going out and get a cheesesteak or a pizza or a Boston cream pie? He, he was a sweet fanatic like I was. And he said to me, he said, no. He said, for two years, God kept me faithful to this diet and I never cheated. And I'm going to stay on it until he calls me home because I want him to be glorified through that. I was like, wow. I'm sorry, folks. Uh, <laughs> all right? When they say, Hoss, you got three days left, it's on. You know what I'm talking about? I'm, I'm going to go see Mick at the country club and say, yo, brother, the feast. But that's me putting my own ingredients in that. This faithfulness that Paul has, he says, no matter what happens to me, no matter what I go through, I want God, Christ to be honored in what I do. And that's what God wants from all of us. Just because Paul's someone that we read about and he wrote all these books in the Bible doesn't make him any different than us. Doesn't mean that because God called him to that, he's expected to have that attitude. That's the attitude that God wants from all of us. To be that kind of person, that faithful, as Deb prayed this morning, not to just do it here, but to take it out to our schools and take it out to our workplaces and take it out to our homes and our firehouses. We need to humble ourselves, as we read in chapter 2, put others before ourselves. Not to not, it says we're allowed to care about our interests, but to care about other people's interests and to put them first. So let's be honest. How many of us are good at doing that all the time? No hands about that. We're not good at putting others before ourselves all the time, even though we try. I thought about this as I was studying this, and I thought, if you started your own company, is it, you have people have their own company here, right? You start your own company. When you start out, you're, you're making it happen, right? You're doing all the work. You're working all the mad hours. I did it when I started my gas station. Had to be there at 6 o'clock in the morning to do the paperwork from the night before. From 8 to 5 or 6 or 7, I worked on cars. And then I had to stay at night to do the paperwork for the day to help the night, the night gas attendants out. You're ordering fuel. You're ordering propane. You're ordering all the parts you use during the day. But what you, what you want to do as that business grows and gets established, as a business owner, you get to then not have to do all that. You should get to kick back a little bit. You've hired people that can do the job. You've hired people that can run your business. And I've seen it, guys I've worked for in the automotive industry that have been in business 30 years. They're still there every day, but they're not putting in those hours. They earned that. They worked for that. And now they get to kick back. So how would you feel if you had your own business 
uh, or even in your workplace, whatever you do, you might be a bank manager, but you've climbed that ladder and worked your way up to where you deserve some of those benefits. Then all of a sudden, somebody comes and says, you know what, I need you back in the mailroom. I need you working 15, 16 hours a day, making welds, doing whatever it is that you do, cooking. I need you to go back to nothing and put all that time in and start working that hard again. How many of us would be excited about that? Right? We kind of think we earned that respite, that break. Well, if you look in Paul's explanation of what Christ did in verse 6, in verse 6 of chapter 2, it says, Christ, who being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man. He humbled himself and became obedient to death, even to death on a cross. Christ came back, and it says, Christ was in very nature God. If you go to John chapter 1, verse 1, it says, In the beginning was the Word. And if you look at that, the word word is capitalized. So it doesn't mean in the beginning was this, the word means in the beginning was the Word, was Christ. And the Word was with God. Christ was with God. And the Word was God. Christ was God. He was with God in the beginning. So if we really put Christ in his, as much as we can fathom, you know, we read the Christmas story and we know that Jesus was born and he came and we know the whole story of his life and, the, and then he was crucified to save us from our sins. But what we need to understand is that Christ didn't commit to existence when he came out of Mary. In the beginning, when God created everything, Christ was Christ. So here he is, God... And in, in Ephesians, Paul shows us that he comes in the form of a man. He humbles himself and comes in the form of a man and doesn't even think that equality with God can be grasped. Can you imagine that? Being God and then coming down here to take the form of this sinful body And not even realizing that equality with God can be grasped. That's humiliation. That's humbling yourself. Saying, I am what I am, but in this form I can't even grasp to be what I am. That's, to me, that's unbelievable. But that's what he did. And then it says he came to die on the cross. You know, in crucifixion, was the worst way to go. It was not only painful and um, slow and torturous, but it was humiliating. People came to watch the crucifixions. Crucifixion was designed to be in a humiliating, embarrassing way to die. And it was reserved usually for thieves uh, and crooks and, and people like that. So not only did Christ come in the form of a man for us, but he knew that that's the way he was going to go out. You talk about lowering yourself out of love for people. Now, if he did that for us, if somebody in your life does something for you, you, you just want to do for them. You want to pay it back. You want to um, it builds that relationship. You know what I mean? Like if uh, Chris and I have been there where we've had financial struggles and we had to go to our parents and borrow money 
and stuff like that. And you just, it's humbling, but it grows that relationship. And Christ came down here to do this for us. Why don't we want to do it, pay it back, or at least try and pay it back to him with our lives all the time? Because as Pastor talked about last week, we want to keep putting our own ingredients in. And that's human nature. Everything that we have in, in this world, we need to work for. We need to strive for. So it's, we gain things by how much effort we put in. We gain things by how hard we work. But that's not what Christ wants from us. We don't have to do that. Christ came and did all the work. And all he wants for us to do is humble ourselves and treat others and care for others as Christ cared for us. And I, when, I, when I was studying this, I was like, how do you be God? And then come down here and say, I can't even grasp that. That's humility. I am um, in, in our ministry and just in, in my life, I have a lot of people, and I'm sure you guys do too, that uh, are hardcore, you know, oh, I'm, not, I'm not going to heaven. I know I'm going to hell. And they're almost proud of that. You know what I mean? They don't, they don't even want to admit that there's a God. They don't even want to say that they're, that they're saved. They're just content with the fact that they're going to hell. And I tried to process that. And I thought, what does God put in people's minds that make them just content with that? Because I can't grasp that. And that's because I, I have the Holy Spirit. And none of you should be able to grasp that because we have all have the Holy Spirit in us. And I thought, okay, well, I, you know, ministry-wise, I've almost given up on these people. I still pray for them. I still pray for their salvation. But I'm like, all right, if you're that dead set that you're going to hell, I guess that's what it is. And then as I studied this, I thought about that. And I thought, okay, well, here's these people. You know, they're all big and bad and... Yep, I'm going to hell, and that's the end of it, and, and, and that's okay. Then if you look at these verse, at the end of these verses that we read, this really opened my eyes. It says, after Christ died on the cross, in verse 9, it says, Therefore God exalted him to the highest place <clears throat> and gave him the name that is above every name. Now look at verse 10. That at the name of Jesus... Every nation in heaven and on earth and on the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. When I read that, I thought, you know, these people are all, you know, okay, let's say, let's say the end time comes, and boof, we all go to heaven, and all those that know they're going to hell go to hell. Pretty cut and dry. Boom, split down. You guys go this way, you guys go this way. <clears throat> but as I read that, that's not what happens. That's a reminder to us that every one of us is going to stand before Jesus Christ. So it's not like when it's over and, and your number comes up, boom, you go to hell and, and you're there. Before you do that, even those that are so convinced, I'm going to hell, you're going to stand before Jesus Christ. And you are going to know that he is God. That's what it tells us. Everyone will know that he is God. And you're going to stand before Jesus Christ and say, that's right, I'm going to hell. I've known that. Much. If you could, could, let's imagine that day. You go and you and it says every knee will bow and every tongue will confess. So all the things that we've done, all of our past, all that's ahead of us, we're going to confess to Jesus for. Could you imagine being one of those people all, that's, that stands there and has blatantly denied him? <clears throat> and someday you're going to get on your knees before him 
That's a humble position, right? It's not like you're going to be nose to nose with him going, that's right, I'm going to hell. You're going to be on your knees because you're going to see his boldness. You're going to see his greatness. And you're going to be on your knees, almost like a begging position, right? And you're going to realize that he's God. And, and now how bold are you going to be about the fact that you're going to hell? Really opened my eyes to that. And, I, and, and it made me realize that these people still need to hear the word of God. You can't give up on them. We need to put them before, I need to put them before myself and continue to minister. And one of the examples I had this week, a, a friend of uh, Bobby's and mine, um, is in that position right now. He uh, was always, um, you know, he lived, he lived a, a wild life. He was the original drummer for the band that eventually became Cinderella. Uh, you know, women all over the place, partying all over the place. Oh, we all did that. But seven years ago, his brother disappeared. And two years ago, they found out, it was been on the news this week, they found out that his brother's wife chopped his brother up and put him in Tupperware containers and moved three times, moving the remains of, my, of our buddy's brother. And finally, two years ago, they went into her house, found Danny's remains. It just went to court, and she was just found guilty of, of murder and will spend the rest of her life in jail. But Bobby and I have talked about this. Bobby was extremely close um, with this gentleman. And Bobby has, we've talked, Bobby's tried to share with him and uh, just bring him to know the Lord and, and hope that he understands the Lord. And I've done the same through Facebook. Um, even my daughter Ashley has. Uh, you know, he was putting stuff out there, you know, want to die, um, you know, vodka and Vicodin and, and all, you know, all this stuff. And my, even Ashley got on her and said, Uncle Ray, you need to knock it off. But this is where this guy is in his life. And Bob, like I said, we've talked and, and are trying to reach this guy. And, and uh, I'll be honest, I finally got to the point with him uh, through trying to talk to him. And he's made smart remarks back to me. And I'm like, you know what, I'm done. And then last week, you know, Bob and I talked and Bob made an effort to reach out to him. And he said, you know, I... I, I Send something, and he, he's not going to like it, but it's the truth. And all during the week, I was like, why am I not doing that? Because you, you can't give up. And I had given up on this person. But you know what? Someday he's going to kneel before Christ and answer for all this time. Well, you know what the side story to that is? Someday I'm going to kneel before Christ and answer for why I gave up on this gentleman. I got enough in my past that I'm going to answer to, and it's a little, it's a little frightening. I'll be honest with you. So I need to strive to be the man that God wants me to be, 24/7. I can't give up on this friend of ours. I still pray for him. Understand when I say give up, it's not that I don't pray for him, but I cut the communication. Stopped wanting to tell him about Christ because I figured he's just one of those guys that says he's going to go to hell. Okay, he's going to go to hell. Let's move on. And that's not what these scriptures are telling us. We need to humble ourselves. We need to put others before ourselves. We're all going to kneel before our Savior and answer for the things in our lives. And that doesn't just mean the, the big sins that you committed, the you know, sleeping around and the boozing and the drugs and the partying and the stealing, all that stuff that I did, you're going to answer for things like that. Why didn't you, you, I gave you this opportunity to share Christ and you didn't do it. So I, that gives me the desire to really think before I speak, to think before I act. How's God going to be glorified through this? As Paul said, no matter what happens, <clears throat> I'm going to be delivered. That's faith in his salvation. You can go through anything you want on this earth because we know we're going to be delivered at the end. 
and we're going to spend eternity with Christ. That's the promise that we have. But what do we do until then? Paul says, I want to serve God until the very end. A brother's comment to me, I want to serve God until I take my last breath. That's a desire we should all have. That's a desire that Christ wants us to have because he went to the cross for us. He wants us to take our own ingredients, put them to the side, and follow his plan. You know, we've, we have a lot, of, a lot of prayers going on in the church, people that are sick, people that are hurting. Um, you know, if I could have put my own ingredients in, I certainly wouldn't have asked for the diabetes and all the side effects that I'm getting from it. But you know what? I have to glorify God through that. And it's hard. When I'm sitting there at 4 o'clock in the morning because I haven't been to sleep yet because of the pain that I have, I'm, it's hard to glorify God and say, all right, God, you've given me this burden. And I accept it joyfully. That's hard to do. And every one of us can tell a story. Every one of us has something in our lives that we struggle with in our own private part, right? And when we really need to seek and, and put God first, humble ourselves and say, God, your ingredients are better than mine. Help me to take mine out. Because what's the other promise we have from God? He doesn't give us anything that we can't handle. No burden is too great. So if God's going to bring you to it, God's going to see you through it. So I just, I wanted to urge us all as we go through the pain and the struggles and even the little things to humble ourselves, take our ingredients out, put God first, and have him be glorified through everything that happens in our lives. Deb prayed 24-7, not just here, not just on Sunday, 24-7. And you know what? If we're all united and like-minded and willing to do that, could you imagine the things that this church could do? Again, it's not us that brought us together here. It's Christ that brought us together here. That's his ingredients. So we need to just trust his ingredients and if we get ourselves right, this little church is, does amazing things. Amazing things. But could you imagine how much more we could do if we focused 100% on Christ? So that's the challenge that I wanted to offer out as I studied these scriptures. And not only, uh, trust me, this isn't me standing up here telling you, hey, you guys need to you know, get your stuff right and, and do that because Pastor Randy and I need our job to be easier. <laughs> Not the case. Pastor Randy and I are held to that same, excuse me, held to that same standard. There's scripture that even says we're held to a higher standard because of the call that God put on our lives to be shepherds and teachers. And that goes for Rick and Steve, the elders in the church. There's, there's even an, a higher calling. So if what I'm telling you today to challenge you is to seek Christ first in everything that you do, trust me, that's even more so a challenge to pastor and myself. Because if we're not right, if the shepherd's not right, the flock scatters. So that's my challenge today. As we leave this place and go out this week, before we act, let's think of Christ. How can Christ be glorified through this situation? And I know we're all going to have situations that we're going to think, Christ can't be glorified through this, but he can. So let's take what Paul taught us here and, and apply it. That's my challenge, that we all put Christ first. He came to die on the cross for us. We're going to bow before him and confess to him. Let's make it so that we have less to answer for when that time comes. Let's pray.
Father God, we again just thank you for this day. Lord, for everyone that you brought here today, for uh, this opportunity to uh, come together, Father. Again, these are your ingredients for Iron Faith Fellowship. And we know, Lord, that they work. And we know that your plan and your ingredients are perfect. So, Father, I just ask that as a church, we grow together. We learn to put others before ourselves. Father, that we all humble ourselves and work in unity. Lord, that this is the kind of place that people desire to come to. Not that they have to get up and come to church on Sunday, that they want to get up and be here with their brothers and sisters in Christ. That they want to be a part of what Iron Faith Fellowship does to reach this community and to reach the world. And they want to be part of supporting missionaries. Father, and mainly that we want to be part of your plan. Father, I pray that we all humble ourselves. Seek you first and your kingdom, Father. And see the great and glorious things that you can do through us. I pray this, Lord, in Jesus' precious name. Amen.